me just get down to business. I, I can really get up here and I can tell you a story about a Jewish student at UCLA who ran for judicial counsel and was told by another student, quote, given that you're a Jewish student and are very active in the Jewish community, how do you see yourself being able to maintain an unbiased view? I can tell you a story about a student at Harvard Law School, that's right, Harvard Law School, who asked the Israeli politician Sippy Lippi at a Q&A, his brilliant question was, uh, Madam, Madam Politician, I have a question for you. Why are you so smelly? This is actually a student at Harvard Law School. And the truth is, I'm actually not going to dwell on that because, quite frankly, despite the outrage of both of those incidents, most of our students will not necessarily end up at Stanford or Harvard Law School. And so instead, I'm going to tell you about students right here in New York City at CUNY. Brooklyn College, Baruch College, John Jay College, College of Staten Island. I can tell you a story about a student at Brooklyn College who came to me a few months ago who told me that she was an undergraduate at Brooklyn College seven years ago and things were great. Now that she's a graduate student, she's not comfortable wearing a Star of David because when she does, she gets accosted by anti-Israel activists. Or, or the fact that there have been rallies on CUNY campuses where there have been signs that have been held up saying Jews out of CUNY. Or there have been incidents where people have yelled at students, let's drag the Zionists down the street, and even worse. The reality is that across the country, and even right here in our backyard, Jewish students are in many cases cowering in fear when they have to deal with issues that relate to Israel and anti-Israel activism on campus, and the reason is they're simply not armed with the facts. They just don't know how to express themselves. When Israel singled out by the United Nations for human rights violation, these students don't know enough to explain that hundreds of thousands were killed in Syria in a quote-unquote civil war that looks very much like ethnic cleansing. When their fellow students accuse Israel of apartheid, they don't know that Israel, Israel, in fact, the third largest political party is a Palestinian Arab party, that Palestinians are members of the Knesset, members of the Supreme Court, members of the government's ministry. When their fellow students say that Israel should be boycotted through BDS, they don't understand that, in fact, the boycott has actually cost Palestinians, through companies like SodaStream, hundreds of jobs when they had to leave territories because they were forced to do so, and they don't understand that a very fundamental core of BDS is the quote-unquote right of return, which of course we all know the right of return is essentially a guarantee that Israel will no longer be a Jewish state. When Israel gets accused of not following the rules of war, they don't know that Israel sets the standards in rules of war, and even the United States of America today actually follows Israel's standards when they engage in warfare. They don't understand that their enemy is in fact Hamas, which is a terrorist organization that routinely kills their own citizens without trial in a terrorist state simply because they disagree with the ruling Hamas government. And they also don't know that when they're accused of Israel not being interested in peace, that time and time again, Israel has offered major concessions for peace, even giving up parts of Jerusalem for a potential Palestinian state, and Israel has been turned down. And so, to me, it's, it's a little bit mystifying because as all of us who have been to yeshiva and teach in yeshiva and administrators in yeshiva, we wouldn't even think of the possibility of having a student graduate who doesn't understand how to explain why it is that a Jew prays three times a day, or how to explain why it is that observant Jews don't eat cheeseburgers, or how to explain why it is that Jews don't drive on Shabbat. If you stop any of these students on a college campus and you ask them those questions, I'm certain but thanks to the fantastic education they get, they can answer those questions. Yet most students have no idea that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East, and that in Saudi Arabia, a woman can't drive a car, and that in Egypt, there's no free speech or assembly, and that in Syria, children are mass murdered every single day, and that in Iraq, the Christian population has disappeared due to the fact that they're getting executed by Islamic radicals. And so, I think and believe that what you're doing here today is critically important. We know Tanakh, we know Gemara, we know arts, we know sciences. It's time that our students learn how to defend themselves on Israel. Because I actually believe that the next big battle for Israel's security will not take place in the alleyways of Gaza, 
but rather in the auditoriums and the cause of our universities. And that battle is for the minds and souls of the next generation of Americans. And together, working together through the SCA, we can win that battle. Thank you very much.